Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becky from RJF Makes and if you tuned in today to make the happy pouch, then stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Becky Alexander Frost from RJF Makes. RJF Makes is a sewing brand um, via me, the brains and yeah, that's me. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I do sewing patterns and sell bag hardware and stuff, yeah. So today is a free tutorial. Yay! I can hear the clapping, yay! And it's a free pattern. So in the description below, that's the little arrow. There's a little tiny arrow somewhere here. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's here. If you click on that little arrow, the description of this video will come down and there will be a link to a Google Drive um, where you can actually get the, the pattern template and the cutting out and what information you need. It's like shutters. So yeah, you can download those and get those um, onto your computer and print it off. Now, as explained already in the actual um, in the actual how to make video of this, um, which is to follow after me talking, is the one inch square. Make sure that's definitely one inch. Um, when you print it out, I explain how to go into your computer settings and um, to change it to 100% um, or actual percent in your printer settings to be able to print this out at the correct size. If you do have any problems printing off, don't worry. Message me. All my details for my social media are in the description below and I will get back to you and help you through that. So I have designed a few little, little gifts. So last week you had the container pouch which is this little one here and then this week is the the happy pouch so the happy pouch is ideal for making a small little gift to send in the post you know what's going on in the world today that there is a pandemic going on and like of us in the um in england at the moment are in lockdown and we know we cannot visit our family members and it could happen over Christmas so to send them a little gift to say we're thinking of you and stuff is just yeah it, it is right so just sending them a little gift that you've made will be ideal or if you know like a nurse or something or a doctor and just buy them a lipstick or obviously not a male doctor unless they wear lipsticks um, but I mean, just buy them, buy them something to go in a little pouch and send it to them to say thank you for all the efforts they're giving us in the world today. Yeah, that, it really does touch me. <laughs> um, right, so let's jump back on, on track. Um, the happy pouch. <laughs> so the happy pouch is a really easy tutorial. Now, if I just take out the stuffing, ah, it is actually a bag, quite roomy, but obviously it's so small. You can keep like pencils, um, children can keep pencils in there, they can keep... I personally have made one, this one, for myself um, and I'm going to put some EPP in this, English paper piece in, and I'm going to be able to put this in my handbag and take this out and about with me while the kids go off in the park, when they're allowed to go in the park that is and I can just do a bit of hand sewing. So yeah, um, it's just ideal to put into a standard bag. It's just, yeah. So yeah, um, you can put anything in it basically. That's small. And yeah, it's one piece of hardware, which is a number five zip. I explain um, that in the, um, the video. I also explain that there shouldn't be no stoppers on the zip either end. And I also explain that try your hardest to use a nylon zip. A nylon zip is so you can sew over it because there is some points in the bag where you're going to have to sew over it. Also, for those of you who know me, there is no quilters tape. 
no quilters tape but there is actually some um fabric glue mentioned so yeah it is actually when we actually make the bag is the main outer fabric of the body and the lining fabric of the body are all joined together as one piece to make the whole bag this took me an hour and a half to make i've made two well actually i've made three now but the first one i won't talk about because there was a lot of problems with it and i was working out on the shape and stuff like that because originally it was not this shape i'll tell you that for sure it's changed right so yeah um so yeah approximately two hours with cutting out and the interfacing it takes marginal fabric and like the binding here it's not bias it's straight a grain binding and you can use leftover fabrics from projects that you've already done in the past so if you're new to my channel hi i'm becky and if you like the contents of this video please click the subscribe button it's down there somewhere and give me a thumbs up and why don't you actually drop us a comment in the the rjf makes um comments underneath and basically tell us where you're from and how long you've been sewing for and yeah and if you're going to make one and who you will be making one for so yeah without further ado let's get making this bag okay so um let's get started so in the description below you'll find a link to a google drive and um, where you can download these for free so it's basically just the template and the cutting out instructions and what you will need um the instructions is basically the video so when you print it out make sure this is printing out this one inch square is printing out at one inch if it isn't you need to go into your printer settings and basically um select actual size or 100 percent printing out okay so then once you've printed that out go ahead and cut out this i've gone ahead and already done that so if i just move this to one side and this is the only template that you're going to need for this bag okay so i'm just going to move on to what fabrics and interfacing that i'm actually using okay so i'm using quilters weight cotton and i'm using um this as my main outer fabric i'm using this one as my contrast fabric and i'm using this one um for my um lining fabric so for my stabilizers um for my interfacing i'm using a non-woven um interfacing by visaline and that's f220 and that's the white version because i do a black version and it's a fusible interfacing so it's soft on one side and it's got a bobbly's um bobbly glue bits on the other side which is the bit that you fuse to the fabric and then for my main heavy stabilizer i'm using fusible fleece so it's fleece on the one side and then on the other side it's got the glue dots um which is what you fuse this to um the fabric and you use with this one my advice is to use a pressing cloth with both of them to use a pressing cloth but mainly definitely with this one use a pressing cloth have some steam on your actual um within your iron and have it on a medium to high setting and fuse this from um the pressing cloth side show you what i've done as prep wise and for cutting out so there is only two pieces that is that has the stabilizer on so obviously i've got my main body piece cut out my main outer fabric which is my main body piece and then i've got my lining main body piece cut out the other fabrics are not in face so i'm not really going to talk about them so if i flip the main body piece outer piece and the lining fabric over so the lining fabric i've interfaced with the um f220 interfacing and then with the main outer body fabric piece i've actually fused the 
interfacing first to the actual body and then I fused the um, fusible fleece to the actual um, wrong side of the main outer fabric. So the zip that we're using today is a number five zip. These zips can be found in my shop at www.rjafmakes and um, it's a size 15 for a reason. We don't actually need a an actual 15 zip but we do actually use a 15 zip for when we join the bag together the zip is hanging off slightly so it's out the way there is a reason for that and you will see that when we actually approach um, the zip part within the video the zip is exposed so it is exposed inside but to get this neat finish I'm going to show you how to do that neat finish so it just looks like it's binding inside so it makes it that nice bit and the whole bag is constructed as one piece so um, the lining and the, out the outer fabric and the lining uh, basically we're going to quilt those together and then we're going to make the whole bag in one complete go which it's quite an easy quick make once um, once we've done all the quilting. So the glue that I'm going to use is a fabric glue. Um, it's a white fabric glue. Um, I don't advise using a solvent, but I do advise using a white fabric glue, which is if you do get it on your iron at any point, because you will be using your iron with this. Um, if you do get it on your iron, it's just a damp cloth and wipe it off the plate or anything even if you get it on your fabric it's a you can wipe it off and it dries clear okay so i'm just going to talk a bit about the tools and then get into making the bag so i i don't really generally pin much um in bag making for speed and um because of bulk and stuff like that so i've got wonder clips here that i'll be using i've got my snips they will generally come out for any loose pieces of thread i've got my scissors because obviously the zip is a bit longer and um these scissors are not my dressmaking scissors but these are what i use to cut any stabilizers out and cut zips down um i've got a marking tool which will disappear so you can either use chalk or a friction pen or um, air erasable or water erasable pen um, I'm hoping this doesn't have to come out today but it possibly could come out that's my quick unpick and um, it possibly will come out at some point and um, the thread that I'm using is Gutemann so all thread it's just got that bit of elasticity um, the sewing needles that I'm uh, the the machine needles that I'm using is a ninety fourteen needle, and the two feet that I'm using on my sewing machine is my go to walking foot. That's always a must in bag making. It goes over bulky areas, and because there is specific seams that have to be a quarter of an inch, I'm actually going to put my quarter of an inch foot on. So the whole pattern um, seam allowance is quarter of an inch. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's definitely quarter of an inch that you need to um, use all the way around the bag. And that, apart from when we're sewing in the zip, I will explain that when we come to that section. And then the last tool that I'll be using is a quilting um, quilter's rule. And I'm using a 12 inch by six and a half inch. Okay, so let's get making this bag. Right, so the first thing we're going to need is the the lining fabric from the main body. And we're going to flip this so it's right side facing down and we've got the interfacing side um, facing up. Then we're going to get the main outer body fabric piece. And we're going to pop that right right side facing up and wrong side facing down and we're just going to match up the sides of both of those okay so the next thing i'm going to do is work out how i want to quilt this so i basically like doing diagonal stripes and when they're inch apart 
or three quarters of an inch apart so I'm just going to do that today um, so I'm going to draw one line with my erasable pen just complete diagonal and don't worry I've just made a mistake there I, I'm not worried about that I'm just going to um, when I've sewn across this line I'm going to once I've done all the quilting just run my um, iron over this so the um, the pen disappears right so I'm going to go over to my sewing machine sew down this one line here and I'm going to use a stitch length number um, four and um, then once I've sewn down that line you'll see me move over I'm basically just eyeballing an inch and I'm just going to keep eyeballing an inch away from the last sewn line that I do all the way to this side and then you'll see me twist around the actual square of fabric the the sandwich of fabric that we've got and do the repeat on this side now you're gonna see this on a speed footage because I'm quite a slow quilter I'm, I'm, I'm apologizing now so you can see and generally get the information that you need from the actual video footage So I've gone ahead and quilted that and um, I'm just going to go to my iron and erase this line that I drew to start off with. Okay so that line's now disappeared and um, that pen that I just used, this one, um, erases with heat but if you're using black fabric don't use the, um, the ones that are raised with heat because when the temperature does drop um, it can leave a white mark on it so use a chalk pencil or something okay so the next thing we're going to do is get our template and I'm going to work out which is my side that I want to you have so that's going to go that way and then yeah right so I'm going to use the zebra as my main piece and if I flip that over it means that I get one of the lemurs I think they are lemurs and um, the the right way when it's on this side so this is our top edge where the zip is so obviously the zebra will be the the right way and then if I flip that over and turn this round the lima will be the correct way so okay yeah i'm gonna try and aim for symmetrical yeah that zebra's in the right place right so we're going to get the marking tool and just mark where the two cent the two um two marks there where the center is where the um the template is and then i'm just going to draw around the outside okay so now i've drawn there i can remove that and as you can see probably not but um as you can see i've got my drawn out here where those two marks is um, where we first started off where the center is we're now going to flip this over match up this edge here of the template to those two marks 
okay and then where this edge of the template and this edge of the template should match up to those two drawn lines there and then just basically trace the outline There you go. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is cut out what we've just drawn. So, and you're gonna cut out those sections there as well. So as you can see my zebra is pointing the right way up on this so pretend that's my bag the zebra will be pointing up and then I flip this side over the lemurs are pointing the right way up as well so the next thing we're going to do is get the two pieces of long binding so I've gone one step ahead and if I pop that one to there I've basically folded the two long sides matching up on the wrong side and given that a really good press. So the next thing we're going to do is keeping it folded we're going to match up this raw side to this raw edge here. I'm going to overlap it as well so there is where my body of my bag finishes. I'm just going to overlap it and I'm just going to clip And I'm going to clip this all the way around. Now, you will get a few kinks. We're going to straighten that out when we get to the actual, um, to the sewing machine. Okay, so I've got an overlap there at the end as well. Okay, so I'm going to go to the sewing machine. I'm going to shorten my length of stitch to a 2.4 and I'm going to pop my quilting um, what quarter inch foot on. Um, obviously because this will give me the accurate quarter of an inch that I actually need for this part. And I'll show all this on the, um, on the, the camera footage by, via the sewing machine. But we're going to take it nice and slow and if there's any kinks we're just going to lift up the presser foot and readjust the fabric to so there is no kinks when we're going around that edge. Okay, as you saw I sewed all the way around um, and that's a quarter of an inch away okay so we're going to twist this round and completely repeat the same process with this piece making sure it's folded in half pressed wrong sides together and we're using a quarter of an inch on this side as well Okay, so I've attached um, both of those to the right side, the outer side. Now we're going to flip it over and bring that binding to the back on both pieces. Okay, so the next thing I can't really completely show you because my iron 
is the opposite side of the rain. But what I'm going to do is get my my glue and where you can see the seam allowance here I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue all the way around. Now I like to spread a bit just a little squirt a bit out and then just basically spread a tiny bit and do that bit there. I don't like too much glue. Okay so I'm just going to do one at a time. Then I'm just going to roll this over like so. I'm just going to pat it down for now and then when I get to the iron I'm going to press this really well. Okay so I've gone and done that on both sides and what you can see it's pressed to the wrong side and it's stuck into place. Okay so where these pits of binding is overhanging I'm just going to trim those off. so the next thing we're going to do is just pop this to one side for a minute we're going to get the um the tabs okay so i've gone ahead and prepped those but what you need to actually do is fold it in half and give it a good press then reopen that up and that's to the wrong side sorry and then reopen it up and then press the two sides into the center seam give that a good press and then fold it in half and give that a good press. So we're now going to go and um, top stitch one eighth of an inch away from both of these two long edges using a stitch length number um, three. And I'm gonna do that on both of these tabs here. Right, so I've gone and sewn top stitched on those two. What you would have seen is me swapping back my foot to my walking foot. Um, it's just I didn't need the quarter, um, the quarter inch foot on. So we're going to fold these in half, matching up the two um, short sides. And we're going to fold this in half and just give that a bit of a finger press and we're going to find the center and pop that on the center and pop a clip on it. Going to do the same for this side as well. So I'm going to fold that in half. Fold that in half to find the center and pop that there. So we're going to base stitch one eighth of an inch away across both of those. I'm just going to use a standard stitch length because it's a small area that we're sewing over. Okay, so I've gone and base stitched those into place. As you can see, they're just basically there just for temporary until we completely close up the bag. So the next thing I'm going to do is attach my zip. So you're going to leave one end and that's normally the end where the zip pull has finished open so you're going to keep this part open we're going to go to our sewing machine and sew over about a quarter of an inch away from this edge here we're just going to reverse our stitch over that a few times now if you're using a zip from my shop they're nylon zip so that's okay to zip um to sew over but if you are using a metal zip, my advice is try your hardest not to use a metal zip. You can't sew over it. And there will be zip in this seam here. This seam here, once the bag is completely brought together into its shape. And obviously you can't sew over metal. So once I've sewn over this part here, I'm then going to open up my zip fully 
to the point where my zip pull will end on this part here and then you'll see me on the actual um, footage is me not attach the zip via glue or um, basting tape I'm actually just going to sew and I'm just going to move my zip naturally around and you will see this in the footage and it will click into your head how I'm actually doing this um, normally I say use basting tape or glue to attach the zip beforehand but on this occasion because we've got a sharp corners here and here you can't do that so we're going to do one eighth of an inch away and I'm going to use a stitch length um, number three on my sewing machine and I'm going to use my walking foot and I'm going to stitch the zip into place now you'll be able to watch this process um, on the actual um, on the actual footage once I've sewn this part um, this complete side this zip part here will be hanging oops this zip part will be hanging off don't worry and this will be hanging don't worry I will explain the next step in the next part of the video Okay, so as you can see, I've attached the zip here on this edge, and you can see how I did it on the um, the video footage um, just. And as you can see, we will deal with this bit in a minute. Don't worry about that. So the next thing we're going to do is close up this zip. M remember, it's loose at the end, so don't pull your zip pull too far off okay so what we need to do is make a mark on the zip tape on this side where this starts so I'm just going to mark it round about there okay so as you can see it's yeah that's approximately and reopen up this <coughs> Okay, and then what will happen is, is this will fold in like that, so. And then go into that where that mark was. I'm just going to pop that on that and I'm just going to pop a, pin, a, a clip. And that's where my mark is and I've matched it up to where the body starts. So as you can see, that's the body and there's the mark. And then I'm just going to go to my sewing machine and do this one. But this time I'm going to start this side. So what I'm going to end up doing is just a few cl clips around. And pop one there and this time we're going to start sewing from this side here now if we don't end up on that mark that doesn't matter but we just needed to know to make sure that we had enough zip at the end here um, so it could finish 
okay so and then obviously that will twist out so don't worry about how it's twisted at the moment we will sort that out in a bit so i'm going to go back to the sewing machine and stitch this side starting off at this side one eighth of an inch away Okay, so I'm not kidding, we're near enough completed the main construction of the bag and there is only a few, a few more steps left. Right, so we're going to flip this over and with the glue we are going to just run some glue just on the edge here and you're not going to run too much, you're just going to lightly put a few drops okay then you're just going to rub your hands so there is no hardly any creases okay then you're just going to go to your iron on a mild setting and just press this down and you will find this will naturally hold its shape and then I'm going to repeat the same process for this side okay so we've gone ahead and done that there is a few little kinks but to be fair once we've done the next row of stitching it will cover it all up so stitching from this side of the actual main body we're now going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away where these two pieces join and we're going to go all the way around nice and slow using a stitch length number three on both sides Okay, so we've now top stitched um, the best we can. I'm not a brilliant top stitcher myself, but um, the best we can. So I'm now just going to twist this so it's pointing up this way. I'm just going to slowly pull it, but remember we've got no stoppers on at this end, so we're not going to pull it too much. Okay. So I'm just going to trim a little bit of this zip off now so it's out of the way. So I'm still going to leave a bit of an overhang for now. Okay, so I'm just going to open this up to a point there. Twist this round, keeping my fingers on there so the zip pull doesn't come off. Okay, I'm going to close this zip up a bit. And then we're going to basically make this part of the bag and that's the corner here so we're going to make the boxy corner here okay so your zip coil needs to land in the center of this tab like so and these parts need to be so there's no creases we're just going to clip that into place Okay, so I'm going to go back to my sewing machine using a stitch length 2.4 and I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch away from this edge here, from here to here and I'm going to reverse my stitch at the start and at the end as well. Okay, so I've sewn across there a quarter of an inch just going to trim off this excess zip now like so okay so while I'm working on this side I'm going to do my binding 
So I pressed this wrong sides together, matching up the two long sides and gave it a good press. Then I opened it up and pressed this in by a quarter of an inch. And then I pressed just the one side into the center and gave that a good press. So it should look like that now. Okay, so we're going to open up this quarter of an inch here and where that crease is, going to match it up to where that sewn line approximately is. So you should have an overhang there, that's fine. Okay, and then this quarter of an inch should be where this edge is here. Okay, so I'm just going to pop a clip into that so it doesn't move. The point here where that quarter of an inch um, fold is, I'm just going to reverse my stitch a few times. So across here. And then you will see on my camera what I do is I fold this over and then fold it and then flip this over and top stitch across here. But you will see all this, um, how I finish this edge off on the next footage clip. As you can see we're coming to the end so which is really brilliant so we're going to bring this zip up while it's still inside out and I'm going to bring it to where that corner is there I'm going to bring up those two parts of the zip together and we're just going to pop that into the center where that tab is same piece there as well and pop a clip on that part there okay and I'm just gonna make sure the edges are spot on okay doesn't look like a shape at the moment but it's coming I'm just gonna slightly open up this a bit if I can don't worry if you can't So it just means that I can squash it down a bit more. Just making sure my edges are spot on as well. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go and sew across here a quarter of an inch away using a 2.4. And then I'm just going to attach the binding on just like I did in that last footage there. As you can see, it's quite a neat binding now. I'll say neat. It's a bit, it's a bit iffy there, but I can live with it. Um, and then basically attach this binding to this bit, and then we can turn it the right side facing out. Okay, so I've sewn both of the bindings on, the two short bindings. I'm just going to open up this zip and poke this right side facing out. Poke out those corners. I'll get rid of that loose piece of thread. Okay, and the other corners. So, and there you go, you've got one little pouch. I like to go one step further 
just stuff it out with some um, stuffing. I'll just use some um, bubble wrap. Pop that in. Okay, and then And then I just go to my iron and just give it a bit of a press on both sides. So basically it gives it that boxy finish. How easy is it to make one of these? Like I say, a couple of hours in the morning, this has taken me. They're just so easy. You can have a several of them ready to make and just do a batch of them. If you have enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already click the subscribe button and yeah there will be more videos to come there it is i'm working on for those who crochet and for those who knit a little travel case for you to take your yarn with you and your hooks and your knee uh, pins needles the the what do they what do you knit in needles <laughs> um with you and um yeah so that is being worked on at the moment now if you've liked the contents of this video why not come a patreon member of one of mine a patreon member is an exclusive club where i do exclusive patterns so for instance one of the patterns is this bag here and the bag behind and you basically get those exclusive to club members and you can join the Facebook group which we generally meet three or four times a month on a live session where I teach you on three cameras live on how to make the pattern step by step and yeah um, there is loads of spaces left so if you want to become a Patreon member of mine and join the exclusive club where you get free content um, and uh, exclusive patterns or panels, so I design fabric panels as well, drop in the description below is what's named as Patreon. Click on that link and basically there is free tiers. Have a look. Any questions please don't hesitate to ask and I will explain it in more details to you. So thanks ever so much for tuning in today and yeah if you liked it give me that thumbs up. Thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!